This is a bit of a different video for me this week because today we're talking about AI. For quite some time, I've had an interest in AI and in particular, being creative with AI. There's a few packages, there's a few applications that I use in my day-to-day -day work that involves using AI creatively. I'm excited about the future of these tools, how they'll advance and how I can use them going forward too. You might notice in my channel, there's a few AI videos started in between the Affinity Photo ones and that's going to continue in the future all being well because I do have an interest in AI. I have such an interest in it that I actually got asked to do a presentation in AI and this this video is that presentation or at least is a version of that presentation. So in this video I'm going to tell you a bit about AI, what it can currently do, what it can maybe do in the future and I'm very excited about the second half of the presentation because that's where I'm going to show you some of the exciting things that I use AI for creatively. So grab a coffee, sit back, relax and let's get into it. I called this presentation AI Story to Infinity and Beyond on the code. So how did I get interested in AI? And before I go on, the first thing I want to say is every slide in this presentation was made with AI. Unless it was a screen grab, most of the slides were made with AI art and we'll look into that a wee bit later on in the presentation. But getting back to it, how did I get interested in AI? About 16 months ago, I watched this video and I didn't just watch it once or twice or four times, I watched it three times. I completely loved this video. It's by a very famous YouTuber, tech YouTuber. You've probably come across him. Mark Les Brownlee, and he's brilliant when it comes to tech, when it comes to future stuff and reviewing tech, he's brilliant. He's the gold standard. And as I said, I watched this video and I was blown away because 16 months ago, he introduced me to AI art. AI art. I'd never heard of AI art before. In fact, I wasn't even interested in AI. I knew what it meant. I had no interest in it. It meant nothing to me. But when I watched this video a few times, he showed me AI art and it was a package called DALI 2. And back then, DALI 2 wasn't open to the public like it was now. And we've actually now got DALI 3. And he was simply able to type out something on the computer and it came up a picture of it. In the case of this screen, he typed in a purple apple in the middle of a bowl of oranges or something like that. And within 68 seconds, a picture came up of a purple apple in a bowl of oranges. And I was blown away. This was, this was something I've never seen before. And straight away, I got super, super excited about it. I'm easily excited, but I got super, super excited. And I knew this was going to change the way I would do work one day. Little did I think, 16 months down the line, it would change it up in such a drastic way. But he didn't stop there. He then typed in a goat wearing a suit, holding an iPad or something like that. And then again, 68 seconds later, there was a goat in a suit holding an iPad or something like that. And he showed something else and something else and something else. And at that stage, this package was locked down. No one had access to it. He had a sneak peek and I was blown away by it. And instantly I was hooked. And most days on Twitter, I was I was looking about things about DALI 2. When's DALI 2 coming out? When's DALI 2 coming out? And then in December of last year, 2022, ChatGBT came out. And ChatGBT, it's not AI art, but you've maybe heard of it. It's like a really, really advanced chatbot where you can ask questions to it and it'll answer, or you can help it proofread and do lots of things. And again, we'll look at that later on in the presentation. But the more and more down the rabbit hole I went, the more and more excited I got. And that's what this presentation is. It's just my journey of going down an AI rabbit hole. I was so excited. I read some books. If I didn't read them, I listened to them on Audible. And as you say, there's a link in the description below if you want a free trial of any of these books and Audible. They're all there and Audible's brilliant. That's the way. This is an advertisement for Audible, I should say. It's just how I listen to nearly every book I read or listen to, should I say. And I think it's, it's really brilliant. Anyway, the first book I read was 2084. And I'm glad I started with this book because this book is ultimately about hope. It's a hopeful book about AI. And if you read it, hopefully you enjoy it. And at the end of the book, gives you a lot of hope, but it gives you a real good basis on what AI is. And I really, really enjoyed this book. Scary Smart. This is a scary smart book. How scary is it, Andrew? When I was in my holidays this year, I was listening to this book and I had to put it down or I had to stop listening to it for two to three days because it, it scared me. It really, really did scare me. And in this presentation, we're not going to look at all the scary ways. We might touch on a few scary things, but we're not going to look at all the scary ways that this book, book talks about because it is scary. And it did make me put it down because uh, just it, it just made my mind think of things that I didn't even think about before. But it was a really good book. It's really interesting. He lists a lot of pros. 
of AI. He lists a lot of cons and it's a guy that used to work for Google and uh, it's a really interesting book, but it is scary. Be warned. Final book I listened to is called The Coming Wave and that's a really good book too, again on AI and that's a good really overall view on AI and it's an enjoyable one and it gives pros and cons. All these books give pros and cons and it's really interesting. They're really good books if you want to read or listen to or I certainly enjoyed reading and listening to them and it just helped inform some of my decisions or it made me a little bit more knowledgeable about AI and as I said it made me think things I didn't even know was possible and it got me a bit excited. Maybe just a little bit scared too for the future. So an introduction to AI, and we're gonna start off with a quote, a quote from Bill Gates. You maybe know who Bill Gates is. He's the founder of Microsoft. And the last few years, he's been quite good at predicting stuff. You might remember he predicted the COVID-19 pandemic a good few years earlier, or he said a pandemic is probably the next big life event and all that business. And uh, he's made a few other things that have caught the headlines. And he said this about AI, the development of AI is as fundamental as the creation as the microprocessor, the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. And I just want to stay with that statement just for a quick second or two, because it's a big statement and it's a big claim. AI in time will be added to this list. And what's on this list again? Microprocessors. Microprocessors are in everything. Everything more or less we use today contains a microprocessor. And if microprocessors went just, just like that, if they went out of the existence right now, you'd be shocked. They're in computers, they're in phones, they're in microwaves, they're in TVs, they're in cameras, they're, they're in tons of things. Most technological things, microprocessors have them in them. And we all know about computers, whether it's Mac or PC. Imagine if we didn't have computers today. Again, if they just went out of existence right this very second, I don't know what would happen to the world. I don't know what I would do. We would absolutely be lost. Again, AI is going to be added to this list. And maybe, maybe the biggest thing yet, mobile phones or cell phones. Imagine not having them about how could we function? How could we leave our house without people knowing where we are, how to contact each other, and what's the latest news on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook? But Bill Gates is saying AI will soon be added to this list. And that, that in itself is a mind-blowing statement. Another quote from Bill Gates, it will change the way people work, learn, travel and get healthcare and communicate with each other. Again, big, big radical claims that that's all aspects of our life today, whether we work or travel, how we communicate, AI is going to change that. And I have to say for what it's worth, after reading some of these books, I think Bill Gates is 100% right. There you go, Bill. You've got Andrew's seal of improvement. So normally I don't like dictionary definitions and all this, and this is the last wordy slide we have in the presentation, but a definition of AI. AI is a branch of computer science that focuses on creating smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. And now we're going to look at some some terminology that's often associated with AI. We've looked at AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence. We've just read the definition. But machine learning, quite often you might hear this term machine learning. And what is machine learning? The best way to describe machine learning is that's how AI learns. Now imagine if you were if you were in this room or your own room and it was filled with paper, every bit of every bit of space in this room was filled with paper, AI would just do a wee dance, get excited and just gobble all that paper up. It would gobble all that information up and it loves information. It loves learning. And that's what machine learning is. It's taking tons and tons and tons of, if this whole room as I say was filled with paper and information, it would gobble all that up. And that's how it learns. And then it starts to, by algorithms, put things together so it would kind of reference bits of paper from this side of the room to that side of the room and vice versa and the more information AI can get the better and that's called that's how it learns machine learning something else you might find interesting Apple talk a lot about machine learning in their keynotes I don't know if you've picked it up Apple talk about machine learning they never talk about AI but they talk about machine learning and really it's the same thing machine learning is AI or that's how AI learns so maybe the next time you watch an Apple keynote presentation, listen out for machine learning or deep learning, as we're about to cover in a second, instead of them saying AI. And as I just said, deep learning. If machine learning is AI learning on thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands 
and thousands of bits of paper or information really. Machine learning takes it to a whole new level. AI is being trained on millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of bits of information or data or paper, if you want to put it in that terminology. It's machine learning on steroids. It's machine learning on a different level. And that's when it can really, really do amazing things. An example of machine learning might be something like your Netflix recommendations or your recommendations on Amazon. Deep learning, an example of it might be cars, self-driving cars and chat GPT and things like that. Something that requires so much more information. Narrow AI, you've maybe heard the term narrow AI. What's narrow AI? Narrow AI, how many times did I say that in a row? Narrow AI is all AI that's used today. So talked about Netflix, Amazon, self-driving cars, chat GPT, some of the cool things we're going to find out in the second half of this presentation. That is all narrow AI. And it's narrow because it can only do one job. It can only do one singular thing at a time. A good example of it would be playing Uno. If you know the card game Uno, you can get an AI trained up to play Uno and it would be the best, the best Uno player in the world. But if you try to teach it Monopoly, it couldn't do Monopoly. Wouldn't have a chance to play Monopoly. It would be the worst Monopoly player in the world. Worse than me. And that's some going. And, go, and vice versa, the best Monopoly player, the best Monopoly AI would be hopeless. At, you know, wouldn't have a clue about it. AI currently can only do one job at a time. And that's called narrow AI. And this leads us on to AGI. And this is the scary one. Ooh, we're coming up to Halloween soon. And this is the scary one. AGI, what's it stand for? Tell you what it doesn't stand for. Andrew Goodman Intelligence doesn't stand for that. Andrew Goodman Intelligence, according to most, is still something that's not discovered. And we're not sure if it exists or even if it ever will exist. And that's the same as AGI because it stands for Artificial General Intelligence. Artificial General Intelligence is something that people think we will never get to. Some people think we're quite close and some people think it will be a lifetime before we get there. What is it? Well, if narrow AI is just to do with one job at a time, artificial general intelligence can do multiple things. It can do anything. It can do all things. It's more or less humans given life or making life in an artificial way. So an AGI can do anything, multiple, multiple, multiple jobs. And that may seem very exciting, but it's also very, very scary because then that would mean AI, AGI would have a life of its own. And at that point, it's called a thing called singularity, which means we don't know what happens next, which you might be thinking of Terminator and those films. And yeah, that's a possibility. But again, in this presentation, we're not, we're not talking about anything too scary. Again, some people think we might never get AGI. Some people think it'll take a lifetime or more. And then some people think we're quite close. Told you it was a bit scary. Now a brief history on AI. And don't worry, it's going to be brief. It's not going to be, it's not going to be long, so stick with me. In the 1940s and 50s, the thought of AI originated. Really, really smart people thought, could machines do something that humans can do? And that was the birth, that idea was the birth of AI. Through the 1960s and 70s, AI got a bit of traction and there was lots and lots of money put into it and things were looking quite good. There was some early development and early successes. And then in the 1980s and 1990s, there were some events called AI winters. And really what happened in AI winters, that's when things slowed down and a lot of funding was taken away. And really it slowed down because the technology was not at a place where AI could advance. And because technology was not at a place where AI could advance, things slowed down. And because of that, there wasn't as much money put into AI development. And then came the AI spring and the rise of machine learning. And we've already looked at what machine learning is. The AI spring came about because of technological advancements. Computers started getting more and more and more powerful. And then AI started to get a bit more exciting again. And then because of that, lots and lots more money was pumped into AI. And then the boom of AI technologies, and we're really seeing the boom now because everywhere you look, or it nearly seems like everywhere you look or hear, there's AI this, AI that. And I just want to draw your attention to this red line on this graph. You can see in 1940, the lines at the bottom, and that's when 
the birth of AI hit. And then you can see in 2023, that line going sharply up. And in fairness, maybe it's a little bit too sharp at the minute. And this really just shows the speed at which AI is being developed at. Yes, it was slow going for many, many decades, but it's really, really ramping up now. And it's been a mad 16 months that I followed AI and nearly every week there's something, certainly in the creative realms, something is coming out, which is more impressive than the week before. And it's really exciting, bit scary too, but really, really exciting to follow. And now we're gonna take a quick look at AI in different industries. And I'll not spend too long on this one, AI and transportation. We've all seen self-driving cars. We know what's coming. And to be honest, before I read these books, I thought self-driving cars, will it really happen? And now I think it will happen. And certainly something like this looks really cool. Imagine going on a business meeting like this. Instead of going into the office, you can have a business meeting and you go all around the country or not all around the country, maybe around Northern Ireland where I live because it's quite a small place, but in bigger countries, you couldn't go all around it. You want to get back for your dinner and all that. Anyway, something like this is very, very exciting. Self-driving cars. And again, imagine having meetings like this. AI in education. A lot of people are excited about AI and education. And if you're a teacher, why wouldn't you be? Because all homework could be marked by AI. That's right. All homework, even classwork could be marked by AI. And that's amazing. It's even more amazing when you think of my youngest son's handwriting. If AI can read and understand my son's handwriting, that's unbelievable. My hat's off to AI for that, if you can do that. And also what it could do is it could have cameras up in the room. It sounds a bit scary, but during a lesson or at the end of the lesson, the teacher could get a report and it could say, Andrew only paid attention for 61% of this lesson or someone else paid attention for 93% and someone else seemed to struggle with the concept of this and they didn't quite get it. Imagine at the end of a lesson or at the end of a day, you could get a report of each student saying, how interested they were that day, how easy they found the work that day, how challenging they found the, that, the work that day. And then AI could actually make individual training plans, individual courses or individual work for those students. Now, don't get me wrong, teachers are doing a great job. I'm just pointing out what I'm reading about. Very exciting, but if it takes workload off teachers, that's something to be exciting about. In the future, it might even pick up on autism, ADHD, and different things like that, which is just mind blowing with those possibilities too. If people's excited about AI and education, AI and healthcare, people are really excited about it. And there's gonna be big, big, big advances of AI in healthcare. And what did I say earlier? AI loves information, loves, loves, loves information. It loves data. Imagine a day when you might have something wrong with your lungs. Normally you would go get an x-ray. You'd have to wait for the consultant and then the consultant would get back to you. Imagine a day where you get an x-ray, probably done by AI. And then within seconds, that machine would be able to tell you, bing, all clear or something not quite clear. Or you might need to see a consultant and then the consultant would probably be next door, might even be in the same room as you. AI, because AI is trained in data, it would have access to thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe even millions of chest x-rays. It would be able to see straight away your x-ray compared to thousands and thousands, maybe a millions of other x-rays. And it would be able to pinpoint things that might be concerning or maybe not concerning. And uh, you could be in and out in minutes. And if there was something wrong, a consultant would probably still need to look at the x-ray and say, yes, the AI's got it right. But 99.9% .9 of the time, the AI has probably made the correct call, but you still will need a consultant just to rubber stamp it, so to speak. This is something else really exciting. AI eye scans can detect Parkinson's up to seven years before symptoms first appear. And this is a news article just out in August. And this is really exciting. Now, I don't know much about Parkinson's. A few weeks ago, I was watching Still on Apple TV. Still is a documentary about Michael J. Fox. You might remember Michael J. Fox from the greatest film of all time, Back to the Future, Love Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's disease. And in that documentary, it talks about he first discovered Parkinson's disease by his finger wiggling one morning when he got up. And that was the first sign that he knew something was wrong. He found out later it was Parkinson's 
And again, I'm not too up with Parkinson's, but by the time a symptom of Parkinson's shows, it's, I think it's right through your body. And imagine, imagine a day where you just get an eye scan and it could tell you if you have Parkinson's years, years before any visual symptom will first appear. Again, that's mind blowing. AI and human advancement. And this here is a bit scary and it's a bit mad and it's something that's actually happening now. And this is a really cool photo, or at least I think so. And I probably won't look anything like this, but imagine a time where you could get a chip in your head. And again, people are working on this at the minute, but imagine a time where you could get, say you want to learn about history, say you want to learn about the history of the world, you could just get a chip in your brain and maybe a cord or something and it could update that chip and it could feed into your memory and straight away you would know the history of the world. Going back to that AGI, artificial general intelligence, if it ever did come out, some people think the only way to kind of harness its power is by inserting it into humans, inserting it into our brains so that we could control the AGI. That said, AGI will be so smart it'll probably be the one controlling us. Just something to think about. Hopefully you don't lose sleep over. Pros and cons of artificial intelligence. And I've listed these all together because really when I think about these, I think about healthcare. I think about efficiency and speed. Imagine the day you go to some kind of medical pod, you get a full body scan and it'll be able to tell you there and then if you're good or maybe there's something a bit concerning or something that needs checked out. And that's because of the data analysis and insights of all this information that AI has collected on scans and body types and all that business. Obviously there's cost savings. This is a double-edged sword because where's the cost savings gonna come from? It's probably gonna come from employees. And that's obviously a con that we're gonna look at in a minute, but there is cost savings to be made with AI in the future. And improve quality of life. Who knows, AI might do so much of our jobs, or certainly a lot of our jobs. Wouldn't it be great to have a four-day week, maybe a three-day week, or maybe you might be thinking, Andrew, I may, I may even have a no-day week, a zero-day week, and that's not so good. And again, that's a con, but imagine if AI could start to do a lot of our work, so then it would cut down the hours we would need to work, which we would then go, we could socialize, we could do things for entertainment and we spend our money on other things and our time and other things too. And now we get to the cons and this background's a bit scary, isn't it? Bit, bit Terminator-esque, isn't it? So unfortunately, job displacement, it's already happening now with AI. You've seen in the news, I'm sure, and it's gonna happen in the future also. Some of the books point out that when there's a kind of an industrial revolution, Yes, there's job losses, but there's also jobs made. So that's something to be excited about too. But AI, unfortunately, will take jobs. Hopefully, hopefully not mine. Bias and discrimination, depending on where the AI has got its information, it could be biased towards one way or another. There's obviously security concerns. I haven't even touched on quad computing. Quad computing is something above my pay grade. A quick example of what quad computing can do is last year, Google's quad computer was able to make a very complicated calculation. It was able to get the answer in 13 seconds. You see that same calculation on my computer. My computer's a decent computer. It's quite good. It would take 10,000 years, 10,000 years for the same calculation. Why is that a security concern? It means that if you're watching this, a quad computer could break into your bank account within seconds, minutes at tops. It could get access to government material. It's again, it's a bit scary. We'll not talk about it too much. There's things being put in place for quad computing security too, but that's coming down the line too. But so there is security risks. Ethical and social concerns. Imagine being videoed all the time. There's some places in the world today and with face recognition, it knows where you are at all times. There's some governments in the world today and it knows what you're doing, when you're doing, if you're late for work, if you're early for work, if you go out running, lots of other things, which is a bit scary. Current examples of AI, ChatGPT, we've all heard what ChatGPT can do. I love ChatGPT. There's a video on my channel, my first AI video or the first video that was made with AI tools. I wrote out the script for that video and then in ChatGPT, I simply typed out, make this a little bit funnier, a little bit wittier and <laughs> ChatGPT made it a little bit funnier and a little bit wittier. And I thought it was funny. I thought it was witty, but it made it funnier and wittier. 
Other things ChatGPT can do, it's very good for YouTube titles. Another thing that's brilliant at is help you, help me make titles for presentations. In fact, the title of this presentation was made using ChatGPT. I typed in ChatGPT, give me 10 titles for an AI presentation and ChatGPT wrote out the 10. Then I said, make it a bit funny, bit witty. I like doing that with ChatGPT. Give me 10 more. Didn't do it for me and then said, could you tie it in with a film? 10 more. Still wasn't too happy. I then said, could it be a 90s film? Love 90s movies. And then, then it said the one about AI story to infinity and beyond the code. And it helped me with the title of this presentation. Better than that, it helped me with this presentation. I asked it for possible subjects and then definitions of meanings. And if the meanings were too complicated for me, I would then I would then ask ChatGPT, explain this to me if I was 11 years old. And then it was able to give me an example of a definition of what it was wanting to know about as if I was 11 years old. And it, it helped me because it made me understand what it was talking about. You might be thinking, Andrew, why not 12 or 13? 11, 11 is where I am, probably mentally. 11 is what I understand. If you want, you can type in for a 13 year old to understand or whatever. Another brilliant example that was in the news last month, a boy saw 17 doctors over three years for chronic pain and chat GPT found the diagnosis. And how it was found, because chat GPT is such an advanced chatbot, the mum or the parent was able to ask chat GPT, put into chat GPT, this is all the different things my boy's experiencing. And then it came back with possible answers and there's a bit of to and fro on and they found out the diagnosis. Should say, always see your GP. Don't Google things. Don't use chat GPT as good as it might be. You still need to see a doctor. But in this case, chat GPT did help with a diagnosis that otherwise might not have been found. AI art earlier in the presentation has said that every slide in this presentation was made using AI art. And AI art has transformed the way I work. So much of the things I do now, I use AI art. I don't go on to stock image sites now. Everything or more or less everything I do is using AI art. Just uh, text, the picture. So I simply type in, I use a thing called Mid Journey. By a few lines of text, I might say a girl in her 20s looking at the camera and boom, I got this image. I not only do you get one image, you get four images and you can tailor it. You can make her blonde or brunette or redhead and whatnot. And remember, remember earlier, I showed you that wee red graph and I said the advances of AI technology was scary. This is a visual representation of how scary it is. 16 months ago, this is what AI art could do with the same prompt, the same information as this picture here. 16 months ago, if you typed in the same thing, this is the picture you got. Isn't that absolutely mind blowing? This is the difference of 16 months. 16 months, this is Mid Journey 1 versus Mid Journey 5.2. And Mid Journey is just getting better and better and better. Can you imagine in 16 months time what it'll look like? How can you nearly improve in this? What's it going to look like in 16 months? 16 years, never mind 16 months. Here's a software product I love and it's called Topaz Photo AI 2. And it's brilliant because it can take images which are maybe a bit low quality. A lot of the mid journey images are, are okay, but I always bring them into Topaz Photo AI and it enhances them and it blows them up bigger, it scales them up, it makes them sharper and it looks makes them look really, really good. And again, it's using AI technology. Photoshop, Jenner of Phil. This is mind blowing. I keep on saying that word mind blowing because a lot of the stuff we're gonna see is mind blowing. There's a short video, here it is in action. It's circling some of the road and it's taking away these bike or tire marks. And then it'll circle the middle of the road and describe what you want it to do. Yellow road lines and boom, yellow road lines is included. Now we're gonna widen the image and simply you don't type in anything here and Photoshop general fill knows what the edges are. Isn't that amazing? And I'm gonna show you an example now. In the last tutorial that I did in my channel, you'll maybe see this photo. This is a photo of me and my two sons in Spain on our happy holidays. And I thought, what could Photoshop do to the left-hand side of this image? And boom, look at that. It knew it was on a golf course. It knew there was some kind of Spanish looking villas in the background. 
and then it extended the image. I then wanted to test it a bit more and see if I extended the bottom of the photo, what would happen. And look at that. It's done an absolutely exceptional job, a certainly exceptional job on my son's t-shirt. It's just blended in seamlessly. I think it's made me look a bit bloated or something, hasn't it? Uh, bigger than I, maybe I am. Maybe that's the camera angle. Maybe that's what Photoshop's thinking of. Now I wanted to really test it out and I wasn't expecting much here. I thought I'd push it too much. What would it look like if I extended the right hand side of the photo? And that is class. It's made it look as if I am taking a selfie. My arm looks as if I would imagine how my arm would look like. And then the final thing I want to do is extend the sky. And again, I think that's class. I think that's really, really amazing. And if I showed you that photo, there's no way you would know that that was AI filling in the bits. And I'll actually, I'll go back and forward a few times just to let you see the differences. It's amazing. And it was made, and that their picture, whole picture is maybe made in a minute or two. And Photoshop gives you three options. And if you don't like any of the options, you can do more options. And look at that, back and forward, back and forward. What a time to be alive. What's real anymore? Who knows? AI voice and music. So some time ago, I trained my voice on AI with two and a half hours of my voice. Sorry, AI, you had to listen to this voice for two and a half hours, but be thankful because really I should have uploaded six hours of my voice. But at the time, I only had two and a half hours to play with. So I uploaded it. Uh, I'm going to let you hear what the AI voice came out with. I don't think it's perfect. I think really I need to do it again and upload the full six hours, but uh, it's, it's not bad. And this is AI Andrew now reading the first paragraph of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Or if you're living in the United States and Canada, the Sorcerer's Stone, I believe. Here we go. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. So there you go. It still sounds a wee bit generated, but it's not bad. It's very, very good. What I use for this is a, it's a company called Eleven Labs. And Eleven Labs has that voice that you see and maybe, or you hear in TikTok or YouTube shorts. It's a voice called Adam. And it's a very generic AI voice, but it's an exceptional one. And a lot of the voices in AI, you couldn't tell. And some of the things I use for work, I have used AI voices and no one's been able to tell. Don't, don't tell anyone. Better than that, seeing I have my voice trained in AI, this is the fun bit, I can now speak different languages. Well, I can't. AI Andrew can speak different languages. So I'm going to read Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone. The first paragraph again, but in Spanish. El señor y la señora Dursley del número 4 de Private Drive estaban orgullosos de decir que eran perfectamente normales. Muchas gracias. Eran las últimas personas que uno esperaría que estuvieran involucradas en algo extraño o misterioso porque simplemente no toleraban semejantes tonterías. So if you speak Spanish, you can let me know how accurate that is. But I think that's brilliant. I can now speak Spanish or I can't speak Spanish. AI Andrew can speak Spanish. And to him or to it, I say, mercy. And now music. Not only can we get AI voices, we can get AI music. And this is something just very recently I've dipped my toe into. And it's really exciting. And it's uh, it's, it's just brilliant. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a song for you now that was written and recorded in 30 seconds, maybe 30 seconds to one minute. And I thought... I make it a song about a boy named Andrew who gave a presentation on AI and then a year later lost his job to, to, to AI. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a work of fiction. It's not going to come true. It's a work of fiction. But here's the song. Well, Andrew stood up, grin wide and grand. Sending AI with the clicker in hand, he said, look at its prowess. Ain't it a charm? Not knowing in a year it caused him some harm. Well, Andrew, Andrew, can't you see? You're paving the road for AI glee. In a year, you'll be replaced all the irony by the same tech you pitched with such harmony. So there you go, AI music. That was written and recorded. And it's not perfect, but it was written and recorded in 30 seconds a minute and then extended. And that was a country. It was a, 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 all you simply type in is country song, Here's the lyrics or get ChatGPT 
to do the lyrics for you. And I just put in a few lines and chat GPT did the rest in this wee music AI app. And uh, I think it's cool. You can do rock music and pop music and death metal music and all, everything you, you can think of kind of music. But I think country, it comes out, it's a bit quirky, it's a bit funny, but the words come out a little better. When you go to rock music, the words are a bit harder to hear. As in many things with AI, that is the worst that AI music will ever be, that AI songwriting will ever be, that AI art will ever be. This is the worst it'll ever be. And that's scary in its own right. And exciting, depending on how you want to look at it. Now we're going to look at AI video. I love video work. I do a lot of video work. And we're going to start with Topaz Video AI. We looked at Topaz photo earlier. That's like its, its brother. This is the video version of it. And it's brilliant. And I use this to upscale video and to sharpen video. And again, it's using AI and it's a brilliant, brilliant tool to have at your disposal. Now, we've seen this wee happy robot before from the example of ChatGPT. I simply put it into a package called Runway AI and it was able to make this movement. And that's just a single image uploaded and it was able to generate four seconds. And now you're able to generate another four seconds and another four seconds. And there's another similar application to run way out. And you can actually say for this robot to move or to zoom out or to blink and do lots of different things. And it's really, really exciting that we are now starting to be able to make video just from a single image. And that AI video that I made a few weeks ago or a good few weeks ago, it was made by producing images in mid-journey, upscaling them and then bringing them into Runway and then upscaling and refining it in Topaz Video 2. In Runway, not only can you just upload a photo or upload a picture and it'll make it into video, you can actually write out things and it'll make it into video. And this, this is getting really good. So we've seen the AI art and you simply type in a few things and you get a picture. The same things come with video. For this, I simply typed in the north coast of Northern Ireland with waves crashing. And I don't know if you visited the north coast of Northern Ireland, but you could be fooled to believe in that this is the north coast. And you know what? This is what it looks like. Now this still looks a wee bit uh, grainy or it still looks a wee bit uh, not video and not perfect, but it's very, very good. And I'll give you another quick example too. If you don't know where the north coast of Northern Ireland looks like, you'll know what the White House looks like. And this is the White House with a UFO above it. I simply typed in, a UFO above the White House, and I got this. And that's really cool. Again, it's not perfect, it's a wee bit stylized, but this is the worst that AI video production will ever be. It's gonna get better and better and better. And I know it's good when I can type in Santa Claus surfing in Hawaii. So when you see that video from me, you'll know text to video is really getting good. So you might remember me speaking Spanish or AI Andrew speaking Spanish. Here is another company called HeyGen, and what you can actually do here is upload a video. And not only will it translate it into a different language, the mouths will move to that language. Here's an example on their website. Muchos datos y encontrar patrones que los humanos no podrían, como detectar enfermedades en etapas tempranas. Sthantri prambik bada kaman hai, jiska mahatwa tyant bada hai, aur iske baare mein bohat kuch janna avashyak hai. So this is one step better than training your voice. You simply upload a video, it translates your audio with your accent, with your tone, and then it also makes your mouth move also. And I'll start it with a Bill Gates quote and I'll end on one. The age of AI has begun. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below if you want any more information about any of the things I showed or talked to you about today, and I'll answer them in the comments, or I'll maybe even make a video about it. This channel is all about creativity. Mostly it's on Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. There is different AI elements that I bring into this YouTube channel, and going forward in the future, there'll be more things to do with AI because that's what I'm excited about. And if that's something that might interest you, please subscribe because there's going to be more AI videos coming down the road. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments below. What did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? What do you maybe want more information on? And let me know and I'll answer them in the comments. Or better yet, I'll maybe even make a video. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully, hopefully AI hasn't taken my job. Thank you.